used to be love. All I care about is your love. It's like I'm like it to do. Is anybody else obsessed with Lorraine? Because I, I knew she was going to win Eurovision. I just knew it. And I know a lot of people said it's been a setup because it's the 50th year next year and ABBA said that they would get together if Sweden won. Um, I don't care if it was a fix. I'm here for it. I love the song. I think it was the best song by far. So hello, welcome back to the channel and to another video. Well, this week I'm gonna do a Q and A. Okay, so firstly, before I begin, I'm very handsy today. Before we begin, um, I'm gonna sit on my hands. <laughs> before we begin, uh, the weekly vlogs will be back uh, in a couple of weeks time. It's just that things have been a little bit all over the place. Um, obviously last week you had our anniversary vlog. This week I'm bringing you a Q and A. Next week is gonna be a Harry Styles special because I'm going to see Harry Styles with Kim uh, next week. So that will be next week's vlog. Um, and then hopefully we'll get back into the swing of it. It's just been a little bit of a, oh, I don't know. I just, if I'm honest, I just haven't felt like vlogging a full week. I knew Charlie was going to come in. That's why I left the door open because <laughs> I knew he'd plod in and the door would open. It looked like a ghost. Are you coming in? Are you going to cut? Are you sitting up here? Yes. Okay. But yeah, I just, I don't know. I thought I'd just take a, a few weeks off from just weekly vlogging because my mindset just hasn't been there. I've had a few things going on. Um, and you know what? If I'm blatantly honest, perimenopause has been kicking my butt a lot a lot um i feel like i might do like a dedicated video to like my my symptom oh he's bored now to my symptoms doesn't want to talk about perimenopause um to my my symptoms how i've been feeling uh, i know i touch on it in vlogs and things and i talk about it every so often but i just feel like yeah it's been quite it's been quite a lot the past couple of weeks like things are changing a lot more um but I feel like we'll do, we'll do a separate video with it. Would you be interested? Let me know in the comments. Anyway, back to the Q&A. So I asked on Instagram. Um, I'm sorry if you're not on Instagram, but that seems to be the place where I, I ask for questions. Maybe I should do it in like my community tab as well. Um, but yeah, I mean, that seems to be the place that I go to to ask for questions. And I've got... I've got quite a few, so um, this video might be quite a lot. Maybe you want to grab a cup of tea, I don't know. Maybe I'll split it in two. Let's see how we go, but I have quite, quite a few questions to get through. So let's get started. So I've had a few of the same type of question from several people, um, and it's about holidays, basically. So it's any holidays, how do you plan your holidays, where do you want to visit, um, when are you going to Vegas next? Holiday plans this year. So I've had the same kind of question. So let's talk about holidays for a bit. Do you know what? I was talking to Kim yesterday, ironically, about holidays because we are planning some little trips um, next year. And I said to her, do you know what? I feel like I'm in my holiday, my holiday girl era or my holiday woman era, if you like. And yeah, I feel like I want to go and explore places and travel places. I know me and Chris like going to the same places. Like We like going to New York. We love going to Vegas. We love those places. We will always go back to those places. But also, I like to go to new places and travel to new places and explore things. If it's not, you know, abroad here in the UK, we love going on our little day trips here, there and everywhere. And <clears throat> I said... I said to Kim, I was like, I never had that urge to travel when I was younger. You know, like some people, they leave college, they leave uni, they have a gap year, they do this, they go traveling. I never had that. I never, I think because, because my life took a different turn. So when I finished college, my dad passed away and then I felt like I didn't want to go away. I didn't want to leave my family. And so I stayed. And I got a job and I just life just happened so I never had that yearning to travel um but now now I'm like I just want to go everywhere I want to discover places and so yeah for in terms of holidays for this year we never had anything booked for ages and now we're like right we want to go here 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 um so 
So this year we are going to Dublin. So we've booked a trip to Dublin. We're going to go to Barcelona. Me and mum are going to Paris in November. Then we've got a little centre parks holiday um, with mum and Becky and the girls, which will be lovely. Um, and then next year, well, next year is going to be holiday time, I think. We have plans to go to Vegas. We want to go to LA because we've never been to LA before. So I feel we might do like a fly into LA, drive to Vegas. Then hopefully we might go and see our friend in Texas. Um, he, he was actually an usher at our wedding. He's been our friend for years and he's moved out to Texas. So he's like, come and stay, come and visit. So we might go to Texas. Um, we want to do our Canada trip um, that we planned. Well, we actually booked it, if you remember, years ago and then COVID happened. So we want to do our Canada trip. I want to go to Iceland desperately. I want to go and see the Northern Lights. I want to go to the Blue Lagoon. Um, I've even thought about going to Japan. Somebody at work has just come back from Japan and I was looking at all of his photos and he said he had the greatest time. And I thought, Japan's never really been on my radar. But now I'm like, hmm, maybe. But yeah, look, I, I want to travel. I want to travel in the next couple of years. So yeah, be prepared for a lot of sort of weekends away, traveling vlogs in the next couple of years. I feel like, yeah, it's my, it's my travel girl era. And in terms of planning, because I know somebody asked about how do you plan your holidays? Um, Chris usually does a lot of the planning. Do you see those things on TikTok or Instagram, the little videos where it's like, someone's like typing away, doing all the holiday plans. And then there's like the da, 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 just plodding to the airport. That's me. That is me. <laughs> Chris loves all that kind of thing. Obviously we sit down together and we make a little plan of what we want to do and we'll have our list of where we want to go. And then Chris is the one that sort of plots it out day by day. Like this day we'll do this, this and this because we're near here. Um, so he's the planner. Um, in fact, I am, I'm not really a planner when we go on holiday, even when I go away with friends. Like Kim is the planner. Um, so yeah, me and Kim plan to do a trip to Paris next year, like a weekend. We also want to go to Italy. I want to go to Florence. Um, so many things, so many things. I don't, I'm not going to have enough holiday. I'm just going to have to leave my job and just become a travel vlogger never going to happen. Right, we've spoken about holidays for a long time now. Let's go back to some questions. Um, what's your favourite social media platform? I can tell you my worst, and that is Twitter. I got rid of Twitter years ago. It's just people arguing with each other in my, in my eyes. Um, I'm not a great fan of Facebook either. Um, again, that's a lot of people just sniping at people in comments and things. Um, YouTube. I feel like YouTube is my favourite social media platform. Uh, yeah, followed by Instagram. I love a bit of Instagram. I love doing my reels right now. Uh, and TikTok. I mean, I like TikTok. I, I do a few TikToks. <laughs> Not very many. Uh, I like watching TikToks, though, more than participating in TikToks. Um, so, yeah, YouTube, Instagram and TikTok. The others, if they disappeared... I'm not bothered. I like Facebook for Marketplace, mainly, and that's about it. Oh, this is a good one. What is the best piece of advice anyone has ever given you? Oh, I mean, I've, I've been given advice, many pieces of advice over the years, but I think the one that sticks in my brain the most is what my mum says, and she still says it to this day, and it is, treat people how you would like to be treated. It's as simple as that treat people how you would like to be treated and that's yeah I always she always says that and it always resonates with me and so I try to be kind um compassionate I try to be a good friend I try to be all the things that I would like in a person so yeah oh if you could live anywhere in the world where would it be since we were talking about all of the travel places I want to go to um if I could live anywhere in the world it would be, well, I have this conversation quite a lot actually with people at work. <laughs> you know, we have, you know, when you have canteen chats and you just chat about random things like, what would you do if you won the lottery? What would you buy? Those kind of questions. And we, we do have this kind of question like, well, if you could live anywhere, 
and I I always say the same thing I say I would like to st I'd lo I love living in the UK I love the UK and so if I could spend six months of the year here and six months of the year somewhere else that would be ideal for me I love being here at Christmas so I feel like if I could spend the first part of the year I would love to live in a city so I'd love to live I'd love to live in New York um, and just have that city city life for like six months of the year and then come back come back home for the last part of the year even though the weather's horrible but it's just cozy and it's Christmas and I love that kind of that time of year being at home so yeah, I'd, I, I would like to split it. I don't think I could say I want to live here forever. I'd like to live in like two different places if I could and experience two different sides of life. Does that make sense? So this is a good one. What do you do to help lift your mood? And I feel like that's quite relevant actually considering what I mentioned at the beginning how, you know, perimenopause has been kicking my ass. Um, what do I do to lift my mood? Now, like the usual, it's kind of ironic because Kyla did a video about this, about self-care, didn't she? And she said, you know, self-care is all about bubble baths and blah, blah, blah. It's not. It really isn't. It's about doing what is best for you um, and what works for you. Now, yeah, I, I love taking a bath. And do you know what? I find that that does help <laughs> um, when I'm just like, I just feel like I just need some time to just shut down, not be around anybody. And that's my... You know, I'll go and have a bath, I'll watch something on Netflix and I'm just, I'm by myself for, you know, half an hour, an hour. Um, and I also find that going for a walk does help to lift my mood. I find that, I find the walk to and from work quite therapeutic actually. And I feel like I've been, I felt better, even though I felt crap but I, I feel better when I'm actually um in a normal routine I'll tell you what another thing that helps to lift my mood and that is um sorting things tidying things a lot of people find cleaning quite therapeutic when they are stressed I I mean I don't mind cleaning but for me it's sorting so if I, I will sort through my clothes I'll sort, sort through my drawers I'll sort through my <laughs> makeup or whatever I feel that that helps me because I am again I'm alone I feel like there's a pattern when I'm feeling in a low mood I like to be by myself I kind of like to retreat and be by myself because there's nothing worse than feeling really low and then being surrounded by people and trying trying to engage because it, when you don't want to that's the worst thing I feel like I need to just be by myself do think have things around me familiar things and just do just do something until the mood is lifted if you like um so yeah that they're the kind of things that i that i do what do you do what do you guys do when you're feeling in a, a low mood what helps lift you off the back of that question actually this is a really good one um it is when do you feel most alive so I've told you when I what I do to lift my mood when I'm feeling low, but when I feel most alive, ironically, is when I'm surrounded by people that I love, my family and friends, and if I have organised something. I thrive and love organising events. So I did my little Easter, you know, it's like become like a regular thing now. I do like a little Easter party. I love doing all that and planning things did a little coronation party a few weeks back love doing that I feel like just organizing things and I don't know I suppose maybe being a hostess if you like a lot of people have said to me you know you really enjoy organizing events like I do events at work I'll organize a little get together we did a coronation afternoon tea um I've done other things I do things for um, like Red Nose Day for Macmillan uh, I do all those events at work and organize them all and um, yeah I, I love it I just I think I just I like seeing people enjoy themselves and, and being happy 
um, and having a part of that. So yeah, that's when I feel most alive when I've like organized something and I'm surrounded by people that I love. Yeah, and then another one. These actually, these questions have come from Kelly Ann. Um, Kelly Ann's got a YouTube channel. She is lovely, so thank you. And thank you to everybody that sent a question. Um, she's also said, what's your ideal day? My ideal day, what would it be? Um, <laughs> I would have a lie-in, a little bit of a leisurely lie-in. I'd come downstairs, I'd have a nice cup of tea, some breakfast, some breakfast in the garden. My ideal day would be nice weather, some breakfast in the garden, and then I'd just take my time getting ready, and then we'd go for a nice drive somewhere, maybe to a beach, have a walk on a beach, um, have some lunch, go to a stately home or a castle or something. I love all that kind of history stuff. Um, go for a picnic, maybe a picnic tea. Um, yeah. Oh, and I. Oh my God! I saw on TikTok they do golden retriever experiences. You can go to places where you just get to cuddle dogs, cuddle golden retrievers all day long. That would be amazing. That would be amazing. <laughs> it's something that I'd like to try. Uh, whether it be part of my ideal day, I don't know. But I just thought I'd mention it because it just looked really cool. Um, yeah, just a very bimbly day. I don't, nothing too full on, I think would be my ideal day. A slow, steady day in the sunshine. Yeah, just doing some really chilled things. That would be my ideal day. Oh, what's your favourite dress this year? Well, I've been buying a few dresses actually. And so I think I might do a video of my summer dresses for this year. Um, I think my favourite at the moment is my Nobody's Child's dress uh, that I got from Simply Be. You guys have seen it in the vlogs. Uh, I've also got another one from Nobody's Child. It's got fruit on it. Yes. Um, also, TU Clothing, Sainsbury's, are really knocking it out of the park this year for dresses. Um, I've purchased two of their dresses now. Uh, enabled by Poppy Adams. If you don't follow her, follow her on Instagram. Um, yeah, so I've got two of their dresses as well, but I'll I'll share them all in a video soon. Summer clothing you're most excited for? For me, it's open-toed sandals. I am already ahead. I have been wearing my flip-flops at work for the past two weeks, and I'm loving life. So I wear my trainers to commute to work, and then I just I've got my flip-flops now that stay under my desk and I am loving life in my flip-flops um, but yeah clothing that I'm most looking forward to summer dresses but also kimonos um, cropped trousers yeah just just feeling freer you know floatiness that's what I'm looking forward to floatiness and open-toed shoes yes what are your can't live without skincare products um, well, I have been quite late to the party when it comes to skincare, I must admit, but I have been trying to take care of my skin a lot more lately by using serums, um, that kind of thing. But my, my most used skincare at the moment in terms of my routine is uh, my Pixie Glow toner, my, um... Neutrogena Hydro Boost Water Gel. I've used that for years and it's amazing if you put it in the fridge. Oh, so cool. Um, and then a recent new discovery is Niacinamide. Um, but Niacinamide Serum, uh, the Simple, I think it's Simple Niacinamide with Vitamin B, could be C. I'm gonna leave a little picture on the screen of what I use. That has done my skin wonders if i've been using that every day i had like a breakout here um i get a breakout all the time this side of my face never this side i got bitten by mosquitoes on holiday a few years ago and my skin has never been the same this side but whenever i have a breakout i whack out the night i mean i use the niacinamide every day anyway the um, serum that i've got but i really focus like really rub it in more on this side 
and it works it helps um so yeah they're the they're the ones that i use most and um, following on from that one what's your current hair care routine as it always looks lovely thank you my roots need doing terribly look at that i do you know what i contemplated going to the dark side last week i was really like i even messaged my hairdresser and was like do we have time because i'm going to the hairdresser next week for me roots i said do we have time to maybe do a completely different color and she come back to me and she's like no we haven't got time i think that was code for don't ruin your hair again <laughs> i tell you what thank you for the comments saying my hair always looks lovely i attribute it down to my hairdresser my hairdresser has been so lovely and saved my hair you guys have seen my hair over the years <laughs> and yeah i i did have a phase where i bleached it it was like white blonde bleach ruined it snapped it had it chopped into a bob cried it was brown and crispy and it was horrible um, but we've we've gone past that now and i feel like yeah i'm really happy with how my hair is at the moment um like i said i attribute it down to my hairdresser because she just knows what to do she knows what products are going to be good for my hair she recommends products for me so um I mean, I've used the Paul Mitchell um, tea tree shampoo, lavender and mint shampoo now for a fair few years. And I feel like that really did save my hair uh, in in those those times when it was bleak. What else? Um, I feel like my brush has probably helped. I use a Denman brush. I also use a wide tooth comb as well. If it's like tangly, uh, I try to use heat protectant spray as much as possible whenever I'm straightening my hair or curling my hair. Um, I try to do heatless curls and things, but it just doesn't really, I try, but I, I do like I do like to use my wand <laughs> to curl my hair, um, but I'll use heat protectant spray. Another thing that I try to do as much as possible is I try to leave my hair to air dry. So whenever I have a shower, wash my hair in the morning before I go to work, I will leave that to air dry whilst I do my makeup. I, I used to dry my hair straight away, because I used to think, right, dry my hair, do my do my face. But I've switched it around, and I feel like my hair has really um, appreciated that. <laughs> I, don't, I don't know. Uh, I try to do all of the right things for my hair, um, whilst it's coloured you know because i i like to color my hair i like to change my hair and i know some people are like just leave it alone just let it be natural let the natural color in don't use heat don't do use... i like what i like and so if i can do those things but try to protect the hair at the same time then you know it's it's all good it's all good um but yeah thank you for saying my hair looks looks really nice even though it's terrible i've got terrible roots um but who knows maybe i will i will venture to the dark side probably you know it'll probably be in the autumn now oh i've just i've just shut the door because mum is now watching the telly she's watching um well, she's catching up on without sin did anybody watch that drama this week with vicky mcclure on itv really good really enjoyed it so she's she's catching up on that so i've just shut the door because i wanted to film in the office today because i just thought it's a nice space the light coming through is really nice like normally i film in the same places i film like upstairs or like at the dining table i just wanted to have a little bit of a, a different background today and so um yeah i thought i'd film in here so yeah she's anyway she's catching up on telly so we'll make this the last few questions um okay next one if you could have a coffee with a celebrity past or present who would you choose i feel like that would change on a daily basis depending on who I was watching at the time or because <laughs> you know when you know sometimes when you watch something and then you go down a rabbit hole and you will watch like lots of things from that person if you are invested in them does that make sense um it's like for instance when like when Elvis came out I loved the Elvis the new Elvis film like the Baz Luhrmann one and I fell down a rabbit hole of like wanting to know 
about Austin Butler uh, and then wanting to know more about Elvis and his life. So I feel like Elvis would be a good one to have a coffee with. Um, maybe Marilyn Monroe. That would be quite interesting as well. Just to find out all of like all of the things that happened in Hollywood back then. It would be really interesting. Like I say, it depends. It depends on my mood. But if some like present, if I go for somebody now in the present, I'd go for a coffee with Dawn French. I think she's so funny. And I Yeah. Dawn I love her. I love her. Dawn French and Victoria Wood. No, she would be an amazing woman to go for a coffee with as well. So smart, so funny. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, can I go for a coffee with those two women, please? Not just one. We'll go for one that's one that's past and one that's present. Dawn French and Victoria Wood. I think that would be a hoot. Okay, we're going to make this the last question. Thank you to everybody that sent a question in. I'm really sorry if I didn't get to your question, but I'm sure I'll do another one of these at some point. I try to do these every sort of few months because um, I just I just love it. I love like answering questions, and I feel like you get to know me a little bit more as well. Um, but we'll wrap it up on this one, and it is best moment of 2023 so far. So far, I think my best moment uh in the whole five months of the year so far and we're nearly we're nearly halfway through the year that is insane but if i had to pick one i would say <laughs> gaining my first qualification for my holistic therapy so i've gained my uh, indian head massage qualification i have two left to do um and i'm excited i hope to finish them by the end of the year and um yeah, I think that's my best moment so far. Just adding another string to my bow. Um, it's something that I've wanted to learn for a long time and I'm proud of myself for doing it. So yeah, that's been my favorite moment so far. I mean, I've had lots of things that, you know, I've done this year so far and places that I've been and um, spent time with people. Um, but if it was like a person, like a personal thing that I've done, it's just gaining another qualification because I'm I'm proud of me for doing that. So yeah. Anyway, right, I'm gonna love you and leave you now for this video. Thank you so much for watching. I really hope you've enjoyed. Thank you again to everybody that sent in a question and also I'm sorry if I didn't get to yours, but as I mentioned, I'll do another one of these again at some point. And um, yeah, I will see you guys in my next video. Have a lovely rest of your weekend. Take care and I'll see you guys very soon. Bye.